the ways that the church um, was able to, to spread so easily was because they had uh, these melodies that were very catchy, very repetitive, <laughs> um, and very beautiful that people could say, oh, I recognize that melody. I don't know exactly what's going on because on the altar they're speaking a different language. But because the melody is beautiful, I feel like I have some connection to it, so I come back. So that's how the church survived for so long, um, was because they had these prayers that, that everybody could remember. Even if they didn't know what the words meant, they could still sing the melody. And so a lot of the, the melodies that the, the chorale is going to be singing are, are, are the really famous melodies that, that helped the, the church to survive. There's no accompaniment. This is chant. This is monophonic singing, which means there's only one line of music going on. It's, it's the ultimate basic music. There is no, there's hardly any rhythm. The only rhythm in it is this rhythm of speech. Um, it, it does have a, there is definitely a sense of line to it and phrasing, but it was all based in the poetry. The most important thing in chant is the words. The melody was entirely secondary. The melody serves the function of elevating the poetry to the level of art. But the poetry itself came first. These were the prayers that were said. So it's, it's a much more intimate experience in many ways than some of the, the grander masses. Um, this is just simply people singing the prayers. And in many ways that cuts much more to the heart than, than some of the larger settings. Durfle grew up in the church. He sang in uh, boys' choir and later uh, became a, direct, a choir director um, at very large churches in France. And during the time that he was writing the most, um, there, was a, there was a big movement across Europe to change the liturgy, to, be, to, to throw out a lot of these chants and make the, the liturgy more accessible. And so what Durfle wanted to do was celebrate these central chants, the most important chants to him personally. And he wanted to make sure that those, those chants were, were perpetuated throughout time. And because these songs are so beautiful, they have been. The Lo Marme was a very, very popular um, song that came from outside the church. And as soon as uh, composers of the time that it was around started hearing this melody all the time, they said, well, wouldn't it be fun to, to write masses based on this melody? It'd be like somebody taking a Britney Spears song and writing a setting of the Catholic ordinary to that so that everybody in the pews would say, oh, that's Britney. That's weird. But it would get everybody's attention, you know. <laughs> so they'd come in and see, okay, what, what, did, what did the composers do with it now? Um, so those were called parody masses. And, uh, the, and the, the Lo Marme has had more parodies written of it than anything else. And when we say parody, we don't mean, a, a parody mass is not meant to make fun of. Uh, the word parody doesn't, didn't mean that back then. It just meant um, that it was based on a melody that didn't come from inside the church. Even though much of this is religious music, um, it's going to be more of a spiritual evening. We're going to have a lot of, uh, of uh, beautiful music with low lighting, and um, the emphasis is more just the beauty of the sound and the, the unadorned lines of music that, that this choir can sing. This is music that I grew up singing. I've been singing it from a very young age, and the chance to sing it with the people that I've been working with for so long, these people that I know and love, to hear this music, the music of my childhood, to get a chance to sing that with some of my best friends is going to be just the most magical experience and I'm so looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs>